Um, all right, it's three o'clock. So welcome everyone to our presentation for um, our representing our elementary education special interest group for um, New York State TESOL. My name is Christine Seaback. Um, today I'm going. I'm the vice president of membership for New York State TESOL, and um, we're going to be focusing on different aspects of reading A to Z, um, RAS, which also we call RAS kids. Um, and specifically vocabulary component. Um, what we're also going to do is, um, if you have any suggestions for another session, um, for another webinar, for going deeper into reading A to Z, there's so many aspects, it's a very rich resource, we'll do that. Um, what we'd like to do is to ask everyone to maybe put their um, videos off, all the participants, just because of certain privacy issues, because this, um, this webinar is recorded. And we do one um, play it back on our YouTube channel, so which is great also because if you've missed any other webinars, you can also go to our YouTube channel to view more um, webinars. And they've been wonderful. So um, all the participants, if you could please um, just um, turn off your video for, for now. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to introduce ourselves like I just did. Um, and we have our, our excellent representatives and leadership for our New York State TESOL Elementary Education SIG, and they're going to introduce themselves right now. So for our next slide, we have everybody's name. Um, we have Susan. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Susan Calix. I'm one of the elementary ed um, SIG co-chairs, and I work in Yonkers Public Schools. I'm an ENL teacher um, in an elementary school. And I'm also a mentor teacher for our dual language program. And I'm really excited to uh, be helping out today in this workshop. I've used reading A to Z a little bit, and hopefully we can share some good ideas with you today. Okay, um, Adriana. Yes, hi, my name is Adriana DeScipio. Um, I work in New York City in Brooklyn, District 15. So New York City um, Department of Education. I am also an ENL teacher. I work in the fifth grade, high CT, in the departmentalized model, fifth grade, and I'm a teacher leader in the district. And uh, Mona. Hi, my name is Mona Narcis. I also work for the New York City Department of Education. I teach grades five through eight. Um, I work in Queens in District 29. I will be happy to share my experience with you as an ENL teacher slash coordinator. Wonderful. And um, Bridget. Hello, everyone. My name is Bridget Pitarelli, and I work in a district in upstate New York, um, Binghamton City Schools, and I teach at the elementary level. Great. And um, many of us have many years of teaching um, behind us as well. Someone in, we were saying, um, I know we don't look like it, but some of us have more than um, 20 years, <laughs> I'm just, that's a terrible joke, um, more than 20 years experience. Um, and so um, it's interesting, and my name's Christine Seaback. I am currently the Vice President of Membership for New York State TESOL, and I am an elementary ENL teacher in Brentwood on Long Island, and currently I teach mostly third grade and special ed. Um, what else? I also teach um, an adjunct professor at um, Suffolk Community College, and um, I'm in the um, doctoral program at St. John's University. And um, my topic for my dissertation does have to do with um, TESOL, TESOL best practices, TESOL leadership, and how advocacy, compliance, and instruction are the foundation of our practice. So that will be woven into today, obviously, because that's my thing. And um, that will be one of the main themes for today. So as we get, oh, we'd also like to talk to you about um, if you are a member of Nice TESOL, wonderful. Um, if you're not and you'd like to join or rejoin, you can always um, go to our website where you found the link probably for this webinar and um, follow the prompts for um, membership joining. And we'll talk more about that at the end of the presentation. So before we get started, um, I'd like to tell you also that um, my focus here on this presentation is going to be the vocabulary A to Z component of reading A to Z. Um, if you don't already have vocabulary A to Z purchased for you by your school district, your school, yourself, um, you know, we're, we're going to talk today about advocating for it 
because vocabulary is such a foundation for our students. And um, luckily there's a free trial, a free 60 day trial. And what's nice about that is even though it's 60 days and we're running into our summer, you can create lessons and save the PDFs on your drive and the cloud, whatever you're able to. Um, it's a wonderful resource. Then you can check it out and then you can, again, advocate for yourself and show a rationale to your administrators. Perhaps they can purchase the subscription for you. I sound like I work for the company, don't I? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, a, I'm just a teacher who enjoys this resource and I'm so grateful for my administrators for providing it for us. Um, so this is basically just what it's going to look like. And I put a little, um, little star over there just so you know, it's a free trial for 60 days. Um, basically, we're going to be answering the questions, um, how can incorporating solid vocabulary instruction and practice support our students? And more specifically, how can vocabulary A to Z help us support our L's and MLL's on their learning um, journey? So if you don't mind, um, if you haven't already, please take a moment to fill out our um, poll, uh, it's a Google form. Um, the Adriana, it was so lovely to share the, uh, the link in the chat, so please follow that. And if you're not comfortable doing that, it's fine. Um, you can write in the chat some of the information about, um, basically it's who you are and um, where you come from and um, where you teach and the age group that you teach. And if you have experience with vocabulary A to Z, um, so again, it's your, your name, where you teach, um, what grade you teach, and if you have experience with vocabulary A to Z. So we'll take about two, two or three minutes for everyone to fill that out. And then I will look at some of the results, just so um, you know, we get a little bit of a pre-assessment data of who is here. So thank you. Oh, wow, we got a lot of responses already. This is fantastic. Okay. We're just waiting for one response, it seems. Yeah, there's some people joining right now, um, Christine. Okay. Mm. Waiting for one response. Okay. okay, so what we're doing is we're um, giving input of who we are as participants. So today we do have a mixture of um, pe how people are feeling. We have a lot of okay. And I think in this situation, in the current situation, that's great. I think that's really great because it's been such a roller coaster. And um, teachers in general are such caring people and um, teachers of L's and MLL's especially, we have a, another level of um, concern for our students' needs um, usually. So that's really great, I think, if you're okay. So that's a really important. How long are you teaching? We have quite a mix. So. There's several people who are 10 to 20 years. Um, great, and then we have some one to five years, wonderful. Oh, look at this. So we have a lot of grades one through two. Um, I currently teach um, grade three. So I'm gonna show you a mixture of, and special ed, so I'm gonna show you a mixture of lessons that I've created that are scaffolded and have differentiation and tiers um, two and three words but you could also add on a tier one words into your lessons, obviously. Let's see this next one. I've used it a few times. So the Reading A to Z program, many of you have used it a few times. And um, it's always changing, it's constantly evolving. So even if you used it three years ago, now when we use it, 
um, it's, you're like, wow, this is pretty amazing. Um, all the different aspects they've added. So we have vocabulary, as you know, okay, great. You know what? I'm very happy that I'm able to teach you or show you something new that you could possibly use. Wonderful. And um, oh, most of you are um, nice TESOL members. Woo! Yeah, it's fantastic, especially in a, in a climate like we are today where, you know, sometimes you're feeling okay. So much is going on. Um, and that's an understatement. So after I get off a lot of webinars, I feel great because we're in, um, we're really in great um, company here and where it's really wonderful to share ideas. All right, so we're gonna move on to our presentation. Okay, I'm gonna share screen. So we're gonna pause at different times for questions and um, Adriana is going to be so gracious as to read your questions, but we're going to stop and pause um, for questions. So I'm just going to talk and then we'll um, pause every few slides. So today's objective is um, supporting student independence through vocabulary instruction and practice. And that's what I'm going to be focusing on. And I'm a big Vygotsky person. I'm sure many of you are as well. Um, and I like this quote a lot. Thought is not merely expressed in words it comes into existence through them. So there are so pe many people who are in the education field who have such big hearts and they'll say things like, well, let's not focus on vocabulary, let's focus on the content. And I'm saying, as I'm sure you all agree, is our students need the vocabulary. Um, we need to connect it to their background and we need to front load the new vocabulary and practice it. So themes for today and rationale for you to advocate, you probably already do, or just a reminder, or just something that maybe you never thought about was vocabulary A to Z provides scaffolding support for students. It's connecting to students' background knowledge. It's supporting ESL or ENL, ESL. Um, we're constantly evolving due to advocacy, so that's a good thing in a way, um, in the content area. Um, and that's why we have our content objectives and language objectives. Um, I'm sure many of you are on big on a gradual release of responsibility where we're not constantly hovering over students. We're giving them the confidence to practice and produce um, communication for all, through all four modes. And again, Bogotsky's zone of proximal development. Um, if you're obviously, I'm sure everybody on this webinar is very um, knowledgeable of this. And if you're not, as we comment towards the end, maybe we could have a whole other webinar on this topic relating to elementary L's. I think that'd be fantastic. So um, moving on again, um, I'm, I'm putting in, um, I'm constantly mixing in advocacy, um, making sure we're in compliance with New York State or your state or city, whatnot, your school district. Um, some of us aren't from New York on here possibly and um, planning instruction. So instruction, advocacy, and um, compliance, that's a major role as teachers of L's and MLL's and, um, and teachers in general too. Another role of teachers of L's and MLL's is um, support students as they acquire vocabulary in, within the content area. We are constantly scaffolding, differentiating, um, review or challenge lessons, adding rigor because our students um, do deserve enrichment, not the constant, they deserve their review, and they also deserve to be moved on. So we like to try to measure a balance of that. Um, tiers one, two, and three vocabulary, and constant usage and repetition in the content area, scaffolding. So if you see how that spirals together, we're constantly moving. I'm constantly using the phrase three ring circus, but I love it. It gets me going and I just feel like there's constantly um, action and we have so many things to consider when we're teaching our L's. When do we do this? So another role of teachers of L's is to balance all of these practices when? During whole class lesson. Where I teach in Brentwood at the elementary school for third grade and for the special ed class also, we're using um, more um, shared reading lessons. That's my normal. Um, routine generally and then um, we do go into certain content areas but um, usually through ELA and through reading um, small group guided reading um, I'm constantly practicing that and I do use vocabulary A to Z for whole class lessons and small group 
And then more specifically, what we're going through right now is with our distance and remote learning. And again, reading A to Z has been wonderful. And it's so, it's autodidactic, it's self-moving. Um, students are learning and supporting their home language, their, their homework, their distance learning, where if the parents don't speak English, which is our language of instruction, we are able to support students to support themselves by reviewing the words in the um, lessons that they're being sent home. So um, I'm going to stop and pause for some questions right now and then we'll move into what I'm doing specifically for remote learning. So are there any questions, um, Adriana? So there's a question about um, for reading A to Z, which do you use RAS Kids or the L edition? Okay, that's a good question. We're going to go over that towards the end. And I would really like, I would really enjoy to have another webinar on RAS Kids, Reading A to Z, and the Reading A to Z L edition. Luckily, um, I'm so grateful my supervisors have um, given that to us, uh, have um, bought the subscription for us in Brentwood. Um, and some people have a large portion of the L edition, but they don't have the vocabulary um, product bought for them. So that's something that we'd like for people to advocate for because it's wonderful and I'll show you why. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll do um, another webinar on the more um, aspects of reading A to Z at another time. But I use it and I, I think it's, it's fantastic. It really is. And it, it constantly evolves and you don't have these books sitting on your shelf. You don't have to create space for them. And the, the topics are current. I, I'm a big fan. Um, any other questions? Uh, not right now. Okay. So what I've been doing since March, since the middle of March, like all of us, um, I said, hmm, how, what am I going to do to advocate for my students for our field and whatnot? So these are the four steps I've been following while using vocabulary A to Z um, during remote learning. And again, you can get your free trial for 60 days and then um, demonstrate the data and the evidence of how great this is for our population to your administrator to possibly um, you know, purchase it for you. What I do right now is I'm grateful that I've you know, stayed the course and I've really advocated for our field and I've, I'm working with my grade level. So even though I'm an ENL teacher and I'm a co-teacher, we're considered a grade level. And you know, I've been teaching for many years and, and you know, just really being patient and just really advocating that you know, trying to get ENL teachers to have um, similar grades. And we have very large numbers in Brentwood where I work, um, which I love, you know, I'm in my element, uh, but it's very different. Everywhere, everyone on this webinar teaches in a completely different um, situation, but what we have in common are the similar kids, similar kids with similar needs. So I'm just gonna show you what I do and hopefully it could help you um, do something similar. And then if you comment towards the end, maybe you could offer me other ways too to enhance, or if you have other suggestions also, that would be fantastic. So I'm going to share with you what I've been doing and it's been fantastic. Um, what I do is I meet with the grade level. We're either on texting, Zoom, or, um, email. And I, I sit in and I talk with the third grade teachers about what they're, going to assign for that week. So math, science, social studies, ELA, and um, maybe an SEL, a social emotional learning component. So um, I'll give input, but it's more them because they're more the content area grade level teacher. So I'm part of the planning and where I'm working currently, there are six teachers on grade level. Um, out of the six, two are EML classes. Each class has um, almost half of, a little bit more than half, actually, yeah, more than half of the kids are L's. And then there's a bilingual class, a transitional bilingual um, class in the grade level. There's also a special ed teacher who's a third grade special ed um, teacher who's on our team who we plan with each week during remote learning. The next step is to take the math, social studies, any science, any content area vocabulary from their lessons. And then I create the lessons on vocabulary A to Z, I save the lessons and assign them remotely. And now the understanding that I have with the third grade teachers is that um, TESOL practices are, it's just good teaching and it's universal and every student at home could use some vocabulary review. 
and it's absolutely beautiful. But I can understand in other situations where it's a bit of a, a challenge to get everyone on board. So I'm just so grateful for what I'm able to um, accomplish with everybody. And um, while I'm creating lessons, I consider the differentiating of lessons, varying review and challenge, scaffolding vocabulary day by day, repetition, and again, including tier one, two, and three um, vocabulary. So what I'm gonna do now is share my reading A to Z. Ah, good, I'm still logged in. So let me make sure that everyone can see this. That would be helpful, right? Okay. Okay, so here's my um, interface, what I see. I'm able to click on vocabulary A to Z. Like I said, thankfully, I have it. Looks like it's slow. So, so I'm just going to look at my lessons. So, for example, um, I'll take anything that we're doing. I put all of this in here. Okay, so a few weeks ago, what was assigned for third grade was a for the remote learning was a YouTube video by Bill Nye, the science guy regarding the food web that's on the New York State curriculum for third grade. So this is the lesson that I created for tier one words to make it somewhat easier. So you see what the children see and you'll see how you can assign it to certain students. And thankfully our IT department for our school district has all of the children easily accessible. So again, you know, I can't show you that because of privacy reasons. So um, I'm just gonna show you what the lesson might look like. So what's nice is in the video that third grade teachers are assigning, you see visuals and you see the, the information in context. And then here it is segregated to really do a deeper meaning. Depend. So if you can Energy. see that, you know, they'll repeat Survive. the words and whatnot. Then you have all these activities to actually manipulate the words and it's student, it's self-driven, it's self-assessing, it's fantastic, it's fun. A lot of our kids are playing Roblox and Fortnite and they're chatting and I said, oh, I have some more games for you that'll make you feel good for, um, you know, reviewing your um, vocabulary words. And these words will help you accomplish more of the math skills and the whatnot. So there's some different um, situations here. There's a memory game. We always love these memory games for our L's, right? We have a word search. Let me see the vote for memory game. Flip the cards and match the words on your list to their picture or definition. Environment. Survive. Antonym of? Yield. So it's, it's read to them and sometimes there are pictures. So that's the um, memory game. Um, there are several other games. There's flashcards for them to um, practice. Christine, can, can we pause for some questions? Sure. Um, we have a question about, um, do these activities yeah, link to Google Classroom? Your words. Um, that's a really good question. I don't use Google Classroom, so I'm very curious if that would work. That's an excellent question. What we can do is um, follow up, and maybe someone can try it out, and then um, we can get back to people and give them feedback. That's fantastic. But from what I understand, generally, you're able to, I know people who work where they use Google Classroom and they use Seesaw and they're able to connect almost everything. So I would say most likely, but we'll get you a better answer um, later. There's one more question about, um, do you have to create these games or are they created for you? No, isn't that fantastic? They're already created. So no matter what list of words you have, they're there. So let me see another one. Um, another version of a lesson. So I know a lot of us like this book, The Good Egg, just for an ELA read aloud and for social emotional learning. So in the end, the egg is, um, spoiler alert, the egg has a problem and then there's a solution. So the solution is to, um, for him to um, just chill out basically and accept people for who they are and be um, less perfect and just enjoy, and just more peaceful. I mean, at least that was my takeaway and what I was going with it. So the words I took from that, because I gave, I did a read aloud on YouTube 
and I shared that with students and uh, here it is. So I made this lesson myself and these are the words I chose. And these, this is what they'll see at home. Carton, scramble, egg. Okay. And then again, if you see, it just automatically feeds all of your words right into these activities. It's, it's fantastic. And then the students become more accustomed to the new, to the same um, way of practicing the words, but they just have new words. So it's really great. Um, to make a new lesson, you'll go straight to new lesson. You can label it. Maybe I'm going to do um, writing a paragraph, you know, things, and then I'll categorize it somewhere. So one word that I could use could be um, indent, you know, and there it is. And I put it right in. Then another word could be a maybe topic, topic sentence or topic. So what's nice is sometimes there's a picture that goes with it. I don't know if you can see that. I have the picture. It's not a really great picture. And so then after that, you can alphabetize the words. You save the lesson, and then it creates the lessons that I um, showed you. Another thing is um, a lot of people are using, um, I was talking to my friend who's a second grade teacher at under school. She's like, I don't understand. If you're teaching them certain math words, is there a book that goes with it? There are math um, books and math topics within reading A to Z, I said, you can use that, which is wonderful. However, our third grade teachers, we chose some, we were doing fractions and we did fractions on the number line. So we have a, I took the Khan, where is it? I took the, um, one of the Khan Academy. I don't know if any one of you are using those, they're great. I'm sure you are. Uh, I took the Khan Academy, fractions on a number line YouTube video and we I use those words um, in the lesson select Dort. and again there's all those great activities and then there is an assessment there's a quiz at the end and I ask for the students if I tell them to master it see if you've mastered it um, a lot of our kids need that spiraling and review so here we have less than greater than I was on the phone yesterday or the day before with one of my students and he said, Miss Seabach, yeah, the, the voc is eight. And he said, the vocabulary is really helping me and I could understand the video later. I, I'm telling you, I, I really, I just love that. That's just such 21st century skills. He's transferring the information without someone ca constantly guiding him. And that's my goal here. That's very important for me. Um, what else? We have the Bill Nye, the Science Guy video. Those are some of the words, carbon dioxide, oxygen, decomposer. Um, what else did I put over here for some examples? Ah, Brain Pop. A lot of us use Brain Pop and Brain Pop's great. It's awesome because they do have vocabulary words. But here, I separated needs and wants into tier two, which we expect the kids to know, right? Oh, you're eight, you're nine, you should know these words. However, they do need that review. And, um, and then we have more specific words. And again, they have the same activities um, that you can follow. So I'm going to change my screen and see if there are any more questions at this time. Adriana, are there any questions? Um, there are a few questions. So one is about the trial. Do you have to enter um, credit card information? I don't believe so because I, I've never done it and I, I tried to go through it, but they, it wouldn't permit me. So um, I did write to the company before I did this presentation and it just seemed like um, it was just free from what I understand. I don't know if you have to, I don't think you do. Okay. No, I think it's just um, your email. Is there another question? There's a question about the definitions. They're automatically generated. They're yeah, yeah, they're automatically generated. And I would say if you're looking for certain words, I would think that this company, this program has about 90% of the words you're looking for. Like they wouldn't have topic sentence, but they had topic and they had sentence. So certain things like that. Is there another question? Um, just a comment about the journeys program. I don't know who else uses that, um, that you can put words in a lesson um, mm -hmm. from the journeys program. Um, you can incorporate this with it. It's from Laura. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And there's another question about, um, can you go through a sample of how you do it from beginning to end? Oh, sure. Sure. So um, going back here, um, like I said, I meet with the grade level. I choose the vocabulary from the lesson and then I create the lesson. So going back 
to the reading A to Z, vocabulary A to Z. So I might have answered this question already, but I'll, I'll do this again. So you go to new lesson and you give it a name. So say this one could be, um, I don't know, well, multiplication. Okay, so then I'll probably categorize it in math. Okay, and then maybe we'll look up um, product and um, that would be there. So there's certain words, since I've used this a lot, I know that it would be there, this result of, so you put in product, and then maybe I'd look up, um, so multiply. So then you'd go through all the words that you want, and then um, you would save your lesson wherever you plan. I have it uncategorized right now, just for, for showing you. And then you can preview. So our short little lesson just has two words. <laughs> product so quick multiply. so fast it's and who, we don't have time we have several several students we're constantly and this is such a time saver it's fantastic i think i should write to the company and have them hire me i think i'd be a good spokesperson i really love it so um are there any other questions there Adri um adriana a question i think i answered it but I'll, I'll pose it anyway um is it the same as is it considered a new program or is it an add-on to raz kids yeah, um, from what I understand, I know people um, have RAS kids, uh, teachers have subscriptions to RAS kids, reading A to Z, and they also have the, maybe the L edition, but they might not have vocabulary A to Z. So, so that's so something that you want to um, you know, look into. It's, it's fantastic. Um, so that's that. So these are just some examples of social studies from brain pop, from math for um, social emotional learning, okay? And um, obviously we know that building vocabulary works for our kids, but you also have um, data and reports for students. And I do see there's a gap between our L's and then students who are native English speakers and um, how they need more practice with vocabulary. A lot of times our student data comes back from reading with um, comprehension where their comprehension is low. People are saying, why, why vocabulary? You know, but several reasons, but we know that vocabulary is one of the major reasons and um, it's fantastic. So that's what I'm gonna talk about right now for, um, for vocabulary A to Z. And there's so many other aspects to reading A to Z that really support RL's needs. So Adriana, are there any more questions about maybe student re reports or student there data? There's a question about the visuals, the pictures. Mm -hmm. How do you get pictures connected to it? That's a great question. So one thing you can do is, where is it? Okay, back here. Um, what's nice is if you see here, so we did this, you can get um, vocabulary cards and you can save this as a PDF and you can share this with colleagues, students, parents, um, if you'd like. So it's pretty amazing. Um, not all of the words have images, but many of them do. And with images, these vocabulary lists that I have here perhaps seem isolated, but they're not because I got them from, I pulled those words from a video. I pulled those words from a book. And you'll see the visuals of those words within the context of the curriculum the video, the book, and whatnot. So that's helpful. But at another session, we'll talk about how great um, Raz Kids is because I know somebody um, from our elementary SIG leadership was talking about how within the book, suppose I wanted to learn about what's coming up. We have Memorial Day. A lot of you already know this, so sorry if this is repetitive for some people. So you can have this whole list of all these topics. So let's pick this one, so Memorial Day. I'm telling you, I feel like I should write to reading A to Z right now and, and they should pay me a commission for that. I'm just joking around. So we have, um, look at all these great resources. So you have a guided reading lesson, um, Common Core um, Supplement, Listening, Read, Quiz. We have pre-made vocabulary, I'm big on this. So they already have, and they have other objectives. They have um, worksheets, they have phonics, grammar that complement the book. So you're working on phonics within that context. And here's their pre-made vocabulary lesson. So sometimes you could add to it. 
or just um, adapt it somehow. There's a question about, can you add your own pictures if they don't include one? That one you cannot. What I do sometimes is I go 1990 style. And if I do, if I'm in the classroom and I do print out the, um, those vocabulary cards, there's sometimes I really would like a picture and I'll just take my own from um, Google image or something along those lines. Oh, this is an opening, that's too bad. Hmm. Maybe it is, and I just have this now. Ah, here we go. So here's a pre, can you see this? Where it's a cemetery and honor? Can you all see that? You can see this? Yeah. So here are the vocabulary cards, and at the end, they do show, um, there's a quiz, and then they usually have a vocabulary cards with images. Some lessons do, some lessons don't but they don't necessarily include them from what I understand their rationale is because these words are being pulled from the book. So that's your reference for images, but then there, you do have an option for some images. Okay, so I'm finished speaking about vocabulary A to Z, but like I said, there's so many other fantastic resources here. So I know um, Adriana uh, would like to share about another fantastic aspect. Oh, not me. <laughs> Someone else. Sorry, Adriana, not Adriana hey. Sue. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> all right, hello everyone. Um, so I... It's easy to confuse us oh, all. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I said we're all wearing blue today. So yes, it's easy. representing blue. <laughs> um, so I do not have vocabulary A to Z through my district. I have the L edition of reading A to Z, which a few people were mentioning, so perhaps you have the same thing. Um, Christine, can you just stop your, oh, you wanna just, I'll talk from here, I'm sorry. Um, so this slide is giving an overview of one aspect of reading A to Z, which are the assessments. Um, I know going forward, something that we're discussing in my district is that the students who will be, you know, still with us are going to have nice set levels that are that are quite old because they did not retake the nicest lot. So then what do you do? Do you just, you know, group everyone together and continue on as is? What can we do to kind of get a feel for um, where the students are linguistically and how can we group students and strategically um, based on some other, some other data? So reading A to Z has some assessments that kind of mirror the, the nicest lot. Um, so these are formative assessments that, that ENL teachers could give to groups of students to kind of get a feel for at some moment of time in the fall, you know, where are they in terms of speaking, listening, reading, and writing in English. Um, Christine, if you want to stop your share, I'll just quickly show the, um, the assessment. Okay, um, here we go. So what they have is um, assessments that are grouped by grade bands, K, 1, 2, and 3 to 5. And for each of those, there is five different assessments. So this is something you could do in the fall and then maybe in the winter if you wanted to repeat it to see how they're progressing. And then along with each um, grade band, there is a list of skills. There's a form to track progress. There's rubrics for scoring, et cetera. So I'll just show you what they, what they look like. Um, if I can find the actual one. Yeah, so this is what, this is an example of a one-two assessment. So you see there's all four language modalities. There's a few questions for each one. So it's not too, too long. And each assessment comes with a script with the questions and everything. So you see it's like a little mini nice lab. There's pictures. There's a reading section. I'm sorry, yeah, the reading section's here. There's writing um, opportunities here. And there's also speaking. So just like with the nicest site, you would have to do some of it um, individually and some of it in, in groups. Um, and then it also gives you a scoring guide a key for each question, what kind of language focus was that question addressing, that's the script, 
and the rubrics. Of course, you could give, you know, use the nice and slat rubric as well, but it's just an option for, you know, getting a, a read on students um, at a given point in time. So they also do have little lessons here for different vocabulary sections. Um, so I thought that's a really good option for, for us for the fall to, to sort of give a formative assessment that gives you know, a, a picture of the students at that given in time. And then those of you who use Reading A to Z, they also have a thousand other resources that we can go over another time. They have leveled books, they have content area um, activities, they have graphic uh, text, they have a poetry, they have a little bit of everything. They have other assessments for, um, for um, running records, for um, phonics, a, ho a whole lot of other things. And, and my, I really like it. And you can assign, just as, as Christine was saying, you can assign things to kids um, to do on their own. And it's a really great resource. So if, if this is something people are going to be using, you know, we might consider doing another, another workshop to really dig deeper into, um, into the whole resource. But I did want to show those assessments. So let me stop that. Um, that is, I'm sorry. Yes, was, go ahead, go ahead. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a question about, um, first of all, is there a free trial for this too? I believe so, Christine, right? yes, yes. Um, that's a good question. The free trial, it says um, when you log on to any of those, they're calling it a product. So there's mm -hmm. science, A to Z, vocabulary, A to Z, the, um, the L edition. It then tells you you can have the, um, the um, free trial. And then we're going to look more into that too to see how much the free trial benefits people if they could start to plan for maybe next year or summer school. And then, um, yeah, just to get everybody to um, advocate for their districts to possibly get it. Yeah, to, to purchase it. I think, I don't know if there's a way to bundle it. I think there is a way to bundle it. So if the district wants to buy the whole bundle, you would get, you know, maybe it's like a menu, you choose the L edition and the vocabulary. We only have the L edition, but it's an option, I think, to, to purchase different, different kind of bundles. So the L edition is RAS plus L. That's the same thing, right? Yes, yes. And there's when the kids log in, it's called kids. When the kids have their, they have their own little passwords, it's kids A to Z, it says. But yes, it's the same thing. And there's one question about um, some of the activities that you featured. Is it online or can kids click on it and, and write into PDFs or? Yeah, no, they would have to, printing? you would have to print them. Okay. You would have to print their PDFs, so. So there's the PDFs that you would print for hard copy, but you could also save them as PDFs and then send them electronically or hard copy. So it's nice you have the option. And then the other thing is assigning things digitally. Um, gratefully, in, our, in my school district, um, they have all the students have the same username and password for basically um, many of the programs. So it's consistent. So they're using that and they have a log on for um, RAS Kids. So, and then with that, because of the way my district purchases it, they're able to access everything. So I hope that you are able to do that one day too. And, and I hope- most, Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just saying, and um, I'm just, I really like this program and um, yeah, I, I just can't say enough about it. So sorry, go on. So in terms of how to, the kids access it, we use a, I guess it's called a portal called Clever and our, our kids, the classroom teachers have the reading A to Z through, their, through the Clever portal so the kids can log in. It's really simple. They don't have to have a thousand passwords and then they can access, you can assign in the books and they can access that, that way. As for the assessment, I don't know. I don't think you can do it that way. I think you'd have to, to print it out because some of it you have to do individually, the speaking part and things like that. Yeah. Is that it, Adriana? We have some people agreeing about the platform, Clever. Okay. <laughs> and then this was um, just sort of an add-on about, you know, our role. Christine was talking about those different areas that, um, that, we, that we, are, are, we are, you know, under. We're elementary teachers, but we're also L teachers. And some of us also work with special ed students. And, you, you know, you're expected to be an expert on everything. Um, but to really, you know, keep in mind that our focus is always going to be language, right? How can we... How can we scaffold things for students for language? How can we advocate for them for additional resources? How can we make sure that in the classroom that the activities are being 
scaffold that's really small now. I can't see the whole thing. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, how can we build those relationships with families? You know, now that in this distance learning, we've realized, you know, more than ever the importance of those of those relationships with families, and and often they'll feel comfortable speaking with us. Um, especially if we speak the same language as them. And, you know, again, keeping the focus on, on the language development, I think is, is really important. Yeah, and speaking of language development, a lot of us are um, passionate about different things. Like um, I'm passionate about balancing the advocacy, instruction and compliance and making sure that, you know, we stay true to ourselves and know what we know and share that with our colleagues who perhaps aren't necessarily TESOL people. Um, I know that um, I wrote, we were talking, planning our presentation here, and we were talking about what we're passionate about. And so um, Mona and I were sharing, Mona talked about cognates. And I remember my, um, my master's um, thesis was called um, Cognates, a Help or a Hindrance. So, um, and Mona was sharing her, um, what she was talking about with um, cognates. So we had, she made up a great list here. So do you want to share that, Mona? Yes, thank you. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I will share my experience with you, not only as an educator, but also as an L. I'm a former L. Learning vocabulary is so crucial. And I remember Kristen said at times, uh, some of our colleagues are not willing to go over the vocabularies that teach content. I know most of us here are ENL teachers, but if there is a teacher here or an educator who's not an ENL teacher, this is a suggestion. Please, I strongly, strongly recommend to teach the vocabulary. And if your colleagues aren't here, please pass it on. Vocabulary was everything to me when I was learning language, like, uh, languages, <laughs> because I came here with already two languages and I had to learn English and I also learned Spanish. Cognates was kind of, it was like a crutch for, for me to hold on to when I hear a word that I already knew in French or what I already knew in Haitian Creole. Well, guess what? I thought I knew it all. I will I'll participate in the, uh, the reading. I will do everything. Uh, for those of you, I know everybody knows the meaning of cognates, but cognates are words that share the same definition in two or more languages. Most people usually think of Spanish because I think 40 to 50% of our ENL students are Spanish speaking students. However, we do have a large population in New York City of um, Haitian Creole uh, children who are from uh, for instance, my students, Yemen. Uh, I usually concentrate on the Latin root languages, but I remember I was doing a lesson and I think it was the word papaya, but I'm not sure. And I was telling the kids, oh, papaya is almost the same in French, papaya, in Creole, papaya, and in Spanish. And the kid from uh, Yemen said, oh, in my language, it's the same word. And I'm like, you see? But what I do normally in September, I have a whole chart in my classroom with the different languages and cognates. Uh, there are words in multiple disciplines, for instance, geometry, uh, the same everywhere. Addition, the same in English, Spanish, uh, Haitian Creole. I make a whole list and I post it in the classroom so, so the kids can have access to it. Cognates help not only help de uh, develop vocabulary, but also it really increases, um, Cognix increase reading comprehension for students. So when somebody, when I walk in a room and a teacher say, oh, we don't have to teach them vocabulary, we'll do, and we go into the contents, I'll cringe, I will like, yeah, okay. But I know I will pull my student out to my room. So when I go to my room, what do I do? I teach them cognates. For example, this week, I was uh, going over an article because we were studying Native Americans. For some reason, the word revolution was in the reading. And um, I have a kid who came in uh, January. She came in January and school closed in March. So he, he'll be the first child whenever I have live classes, the first student in. 
and the word revolution was was in the reading all i heard is like uh i know the word in french miss narcissus i've no i'm like we have rules you're not supposed to call out because everybody's here and you so i had to stop sharing my screen and say yes um uh, revolution and i say okay uh the word yes the word is french so the next day we were playing kahoot and he stopped and says i want to give a sentence with revolution go ahead um he goes uh i will be a revolution listen for a teacher who is not an enl teacher it might not be much but for us enl teacher remember the nicest left it makes a diff it is a big difference from a student who just started as a beginner to a student who's going to be to gonna get moved to um trend not transition what's the next level emerging because the nicest slide at the beginning is really a testing for language output so it is an output there guess what i did i just did the um, uh, i have a jump for joy dance that we do when my students um make step are able to come up with sentences, are able to put out language, especially my beginners. So I was like, yes. And I have, I know the answer. I have a student, I know the answer. Because he, he came uh, in December, so a month before my newer student, so he knows it all. So I know the answer. Okay, so what's the answer? Oh, he didn't give you a good sentence. I said, what's the sentence? I will do a revolution with France in the schoolyard because he knows the word revolution also. So he, or he was able to give me a sentence. Yes, his sentence makes sense. So he will move from one level to the next. So cognates is so important. There was a nice article in uh, Coloring Colorado. Uh, I had to look at my note for, um, for the title. I think it's called, um, what is it? Uh, Oh God, it's called cognate to increase, uh, cognate to increase reading comprehension. But if you Google those words in Co Coloring, Colorado, you will be able to read the article. It tells us why teaching cognates are so, so, it's a very, very important thing to do. Um, I can go on and on with my own experience as a language learner being in other countries where I don't know the language, but I will know two or three words and it will help me um, just get whatever I'm trying to get at that time, whether it's food or getting to the next street, it helps. So my saying to you, I am going to tell everyone in here, please, it's a recommendation. I'm not telling you what to do because everyone here uh, is a wonderful professional. However, if your colleagues are not teaching vocabulary, um before uh, and i say before the content please pass the word cognates to me is my life and i continue every day to learn a new language i go to different countries every time i'm going i go learn a new word because i know i need to survive in that country thank you so much thank you thank you mona i agree and there's some languages that um I like the humbling experience where I can't latch on to something so quickly. So I learned Spanish like that. I love Spanish since I was six. I wasn't a native speaker, but I wanted to learn and I, and I really, really enjoy it. So I was there. And then when it comes to certain languages, like I went to Vietnam, even the word for thank you and hello, it would go in one ear and out the other. And I just, it was so, such a wonderfully humbling experience because then, then I realized how challenging it is to speak a new language. And then it is so rewarding when you do learn um, new words. So that was fantastic. I really like that. So yeah, cognates are so important. Um, um, what I would like- One more thing. Can, oh, sorry. I, sorry to stop you because uh -huh. I know the question was um, to a colleague, I do not speak another language. You do not have to speak another language to know cognates, okay? Mm -hmm. um, if, a, if you think there is a cognate for a word, just go online and Google it and, or a word to word dictionary. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you will find a cognate. Somebody typed, there was a typo. Um, was it in, on the list or? Um, oh, on here? On here? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Which word? I don't know. Okay. Don't and know. another thing is, 
if the kids come to you with a wealth of knowledge, with a wealth of language. So if you take time, even if they say it with the wrong accent, for instance, let's take the word original, original, origin, or in Creole, original, take time. If you listen to them, you will hear the English accent in the word. Okay, please take time and because they come to you with language already. Yeah, it's true. You really want to pat them on the back for the effort that they did. And, um, and like I said, when I go to different countries and the other languages are hard for me, I'm reminded like I need to, I like when people are patient with me. So it's fantastic. I love it. So I like, of course, I'm a big Vygotsky person. So language is the tool of tools and vocabulary is the, um, one of the um, major foundations, obviously, of language. And, um, you know, for myself, um, as a native English speaker, I'm up taking a statistics class. The statistics class is a whole other language. So I'll make um, fl uh, flashcards for myself. And, you know, I need to learn the new math again. I haven't learned it in over 20 years. So I have to relearn lots of different um, topics. Um, so yeah, it's, it's great. And I really appreciate these facts too. And I'm sure everybody here does too. So um, if you don't mind, if you could please um, fill out our checkout poll, it's another one in the form of a Google form, just so we can get some feedback. And I'm sure there's tons of questions still because reading A to Z is really just such a rich uh, resource for our language learners. And it's so easily accessible and it's so age appropriate for them as well. It's, um, it's scaled to their reading level. We can scale it to their reading level and their level and then push them to the next level in their development. And yeah, so um, Adriana is gonna share our, our link. Yes, it's in the chat. Oh, mm -hmm. fantastic. So if you can, you can click on it or um, copy and paste it into your browser, whatever you're more comfortable with, or just send us um, your email address if you'd like to um, give us some more information. And um, I'll just have this up. Language is the tool of tools. And um, we'd also just like to say um, thank you from our mom, um, from myself, um, from New York State TESOL. Um, our, I'm the vice president of membership. And we have our wonderful leadership team for elementary SIG. And um, would you guys like to say anything else? Just thank you. It's been a pleasure. And I, I hope this was helpful. To me, it was very so. <laughs> I'm glad. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Christine, for thank inviting you. us. And, you know, especially that last question on your form or what other topics um, people are interested in, that's, yeah. that's really important. The leadership is just taking that into account and planning things moving ahead. So that's a great, great uh, source of input from, from everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Really, I'm looking forward to getting all the responses. And are there any more questions, um, Adriana? Or maybe no, just a lot of thanks and acknowledgement. So well done. All right, nice work, thank everybody. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for your feedback. Thank you. Are we staying on, ladies? If you want to chat for a second, just to kind of. Okay. Yeah, if, I mean, if anybody wants to ask a question and not type it, I guess they can unmute themselves and, and do that as well. That's a great idea. Oh. Thank you, Monica. Mmm, that's a good one. Flipgrid. More tech tools people are asking for. Mm. Flipgrid I've recently become proficient in, and I'm, I have to say it has pros and cons, but I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, oh, I want to try that. I haven't tried that yet. I haven't either. Mm -hmm. Is that the one where they can record? Yes. Okay. There's, some, there's somewhat of a privacy issue. You have to be very clear with families about it. Mm. Okay. Because your kids are online. You know, what yeah. grade level are your kids using it for? I heard from K. I'm fifth grade, but I really? Heard K, yep, yep. Because our kids are using Seesaw, and my elves are really great at like recording themselves doing stuff. They use that too. Mm -hmm. Is that the same kind of thing? Same, a little different, but the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, last week, Kendra Howard on the membership team, she presented on. Um, uh, seesaw was fantastic and what's funny was she used the good egg and some great um, lessons she did through it and it was it was phenomenal and it seems so easily accessible when we are in actual physical school and then from home the kids are able to access it at home 
I want to get more into that for next year, Seesaw. I could see that happening. Do we have any more participants still on or did yeah. everybody? Uh, yeah, yeah, there are. A lot of praises and thanks to all. <laughs> oh, really nice to hear. That's cool. All right, great. So I think um, this went pretty well. Yes, so. well great done. job. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Thank you, Christine, for having us aboard. Thank you so much. You guys were so fantastic to work with, really. I, I can't, I'm looking forward to doing this again, if you guys are interested. Absolutely. Look, um, look what I was dealing with during the whole presentation. Oh. <laughs> Ladies, I have, I have an emergency. I have to get off. Okay. Something okay. with my parent. Okay. Okay. Updated. Okay.